Great. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'm here this evening to talk about the Salesforce Code Analyzer, which is something that I believe should be every Salesforce developer's sidekick. Um, and hopefully you'll agree with me by the end of this session. Um, my name's Michael. Um, as Todd mentioned, I'm what we call an ISV technical evangelist at Salesforce, which is a, an interesting title, but really it means that my role is to provide um, architectural guidance to our ISV partners. So our ISVs are those partners who build products for distribution on the Salesforce platform. Um, and my role is really to help those partners build products that um, are beneficial for our, our mutual um, customers. Um, I'm also uh, available on Twitter at SF Michael Holt, if, if anybody is still using Twitter. I don't know, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. Bit of a contentious topic, but um, yeah, I am on there. And we're also joined this evening as well by John Bellow. Um, some of you may know John as, as my boss, but that is no longer the case. Uh, John, John is no longer my boss. He's actually a product manager at Salesforce now. And John's responsible for a, uh, a number of uh, technologies that surround our a kind of packaging and distribution part of, of Salesforce. Um, and that includes actually Salesforce Code Analyzer. So John will be able to not only keep me honest here, but I'll, he'll also be in a position where I can throw him to the wolves when we get to that all important Q&A. Um, so with that said, let's get stuck in. Um, I know perhaps we are running a little bit over time, so I'll only spend sort of half an hour or so running through the forward looking statement. Uh, but no, obviously I am from Salesforce, so uh, please make all of your purchasing decisions based only on technology that's available today. In terms of a quick agenda, um, a few things I want to get through. So uh, first of all, I just want to give a kind of a general overview of static code analysis for those of you who may not be familiar um, with, uh, with static code analysis. I then want to, want to take that and put that in the context of, of Salesforce, of course, um, and then talk about a couple of different approaches that we've got to scanning using the Salesforce code analyzer. Um, we'll then run through a quick demo. Um, of those approaches to, to scanning, and then we'll talk through um, some best practices, and then um, we'll give you some resources, um, and as I say, I'll stick John in front of you for the Q&A. Um, so, static code analysis, um, a quick overview. Um, static code analysis is an automated approach to inspecting code to ensure compliance with coding standards, security, and best practices. It's generally very fast because the assessed code is not executed when it's being analyzed. So it's Break that down for a second. First of all, static code analysis is an automated tool that we use when we're developing, or perhaps in line with our CI CD tools that we might be using when deploying to our, our customers or a latest release of, our, uh, of a stable package. Um, it also is something that we want to use to keep us uh, in line with whatever coding practices we, we may have, whether those be kind of industry standards or specific in house coding practices that we might want to align ourselves to as a team. Um, it's also very fast. It's fast because static code analysis doesn't typically execute uh, the code that you've actually written. All it does is it takes the file of the, 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 the code that you've written and it kind of scans that file um, and it, it tries to find what we call violations. Um, and those violations occur as a result of, of rules that have been written for the tool that, you have, uh, that, that you're using. Um, so, so static code analysis is really nothing without rules. Um, and what static code analysis will attempt to do is to essentially check the, the code that you've written, compare it to a series of rules that have been defined, um, and if it finds anything that violates those rules, it'll create a violation for you so that you can ultimately go back and, and hopefully fix that issue. So as a result of that, static code analysis is generally good at finding a few, uh, a few issues. First of all, of course, it's good at finding those, those, those violations to your coding standards. Um, it's also good at finding things like undefined val values. If you haven't yet compiled your code, for example, then static code analysis is going to be able to tell you that you've got undefined values. It's also good at the flip side of that, where if you have defined a value, but you've not gone on to then use that value within your code, it's going to be able to tell you you've defined something here, you've not gone on to use it, and that could help potentially help you with, uh, with performance and things like that as well. Um, syntax violations, um, it's also good at, at identifying, as well as some security vulnerabilities that you may have been able to um, identify or, or, or um, create rules for as a part of as part of the rules that you've created. So with that brief overview of kind of what static, uh, static code analysis is, let's move that into the context of Salesforce and the uh, Salesforce code analyzer. So before I talk a little bit about this, who here in the room, just raise your hand if you've heard of PMD. Okay, keep your hand up if you've used PMD. And now keep your hand up if you've used PMD in the context of Salesforce Code Analyzer. Okay, so there's just a few of you in the room. Okay, interesting. 
Um, so for, for those of you who've still got your hand, who've still had your hands raised, I'm sure there'll be plenty in this for, for, you to, for you to learn. And those of you who didn't raise your hand, hopefully even more. Um, but before we, did, before we um, um, dive into uh, uh, the latest updates to the Salesforce Code Analyzer, let's just take a little walk um, back through uh, history. In about 2016, a, a fairly prominent member of the Salesforce community by the name of Robert Sursaman, and I hope he's not going to butcher me, for, or kill me for butchering his name, but Robert Sursaman, he, he, was, he found himself in an interesting position. Robert, like uh, I think many of you, wor worked for a fairly small um, ISV at the time. And uh, for those of you who aren't aware, being an ISV, being a, a, an application partner and distributing products on the App Exchange requires you to go through what we call the security review. And this is a, a process where you need to um, basically um, make sure that your, your application is secure for, for our customers, for Salesforce, and even for yourselves as a partner as well. And what um, Robert found himself in a position where he's kind of getting to that security review. Um, and that is, that's when he would find out, you know, a series of issues that had occurred in his code. So he thought to himself, well, how can I get ahead of the security review and resolve those issues before I've kind of joined the security review queue, which can take quite a bit of time to get through. Um, and as a result, what he did was he turned to a tool that existed out there in the community or well, in, the, in the wider ecosystem, not just Salesforce, um, that already existed called PMD. Um, and he took that tool and he decided to, to see whether he could port that tool from uh, Java um, to Apex. And so there were, as, we, as many of us know, there's a number of uh, similarities between obviously the Java language, uh, language and Apex. So he was able to take a, a lot of those rules and port them from, from Java into Apex. And he was also able to create a number of custom rules as well so that he could handle things like, you know, things that aren't specific to, for example, Java, but are specific to, to Apex, like governor limits, for example. And as a result of that, he, he's able, with the help of um, some folks from Salesforce and the wider community, to build um, a, uh, a, a to, to, to port PMD from, from Java to, uh, to Apex um, with about 60 or 70 rules, including a couple of rules for, for Visual Force as well. Um, and that was really the first time that we had a static code analysis tool available within the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, but we also found that, you know, obviously since 2016, Salesforce has moved on, on a lot, moved on a lot since then. Um, and there are things that we, we use now uh, frequently that we perhaps didn't um, back in 2016. Things like JavaScript, things like, um, you know, within, within the context of our Lightning Web components and other things. And, and PMD isn't good at everything. Um, and so what John and the rest of the team around him have done is they've taken that hard work from, from, uh, that's been put into PMD and they've added to, to, to that. Um, and they've also added a number of other tools and engines into the mix as well. They've added in ESLint for JavaScript, for Lightning Web Components, and for any uh, you know, TypeScript type plugins you might have in your kind of wider Salesforce, uh, eco, uh, wider Salesforce code base. They've also added RetireJS and CPD. These are two interesting tools. Uh, RetireJS will allow developers to detect uh, vulnerabilities in uh, perhaps older versions of external JavaScript libraries that you might be using. Um, to make sure that you're aware and able to update those vulnerabilities. Interestingly, that's also now included within the OWASP top 10 as well. So it is considered a, um, a pretty, you know, a significant vulnerability in kind of the world of web development. And CPD is the copy paste detector, which kind of, as the name suggests, um, identifies um, duplicate portions of code um, that will, uh, that are perhaps prime for some um, refactoring. And all of that exists within what we call Salesforce Code Analyzer, which is an open source and free to use tool for both customers and partners. But they didn't stop there either. What they've also recently introduced in version 3.6.2 is what we call the Salesforce Graph Engine. Um, so let's dive in a little bit into uh, kind of what Salesforce Graph Engine provides and maybe the difference between uh, things we've talked about so far. So firstly, everything we've talked about so far um, is in terms of uh, PMD, uh, ESLint, and the other, the other tools are static code analysis tools. And as I mentioned before, these are great tools for, um, uh, for identifying vulnerabilities in your code without executing your code. Um, and they're, they're really fast. it's a really fast way of, of, of finding those, those violations. Um, but there's a few things that, that PMD maybe or, or other static code analysis tools aren't so great at. The way that PMD and, and static code analysis tools work is that they generally take a single file at a time. They try to identify violations within that file, and then they'll move on to whatever the next file is within the, within the target directory that you've given them. Um, and that means that they're really good. You know, if, when we've defined those rules, um, if we take an example, um, 
Imagine that you have a rule that is able to detect whether you've got a DML statement in a loop. That's obviously something we as Salesforce developers really need to uh, you know, keep our eyes out for. Um, PMD will be really good at picking that up because we, we're able to define a rule and we're able to say, okay, well, we've got a DML statement that's found itself within a loop here, so we're able to throw an error, um, a throw, throw a violation in that situation. But what it's not so good at is looking across multiple different files. Um, what it's not so good at is, is looking across multiple different files to see uh, whether violations occur elsewhere in the code base that may have an impact um, on what we're, what we're um, dealing with in our current file. So let's stick with that DML example, and let's imagine what we're trying to do is we're trying to insert an opportunity, right? And we're trying to, ch to insert an opportunity um, with a certain amount. As a, as a Salesforce best practice, what we should do and what we you know, encourage our ISVs and e even actually force, in many cases, our ISVs to do through security review is to actually check that the user that's executing that code has the, uh, has the uh, permissions to insert an opportunity record into the database and write to the amount field. What many, uh, what many developers will want to do, though, is they'll want to abstract the business logic from that kind of permissions check. And what that means is that we might have two different files, one that is handling the insert of that opportunity record, and one that's handling whether that opportunity is allowed to be submitted into the database by this particular executing user. Well, PMD isn't going to be able to find that issue. It's going to look at the single. It's going to look at a single file, and it's going to detect that there are no checks within there. And as a result, you might have an, FL, uh, uh, an Apex FLS and, and CRUD violation that's flagged. This is where data flow analysis comes in. Data flow analysis is different to static flow analysis in that data flow analysis is able to create a more holistic, broader view of your code base. It essentially builds a um, a, a picture of the overall state of your system. Again, it doesn't execute the code, but what it tries to do is identify the paths between your code, between various different files, um, and identify uh, whether there are actually, you know, for example, a violation that may have otherwise occurred is actually resolved elsewhere because it's able to step through your code, create a, a, create a kind of graph of what's going on, um, and therefore those violations won't occur. So that's data flow analysis. And so what we've done with Salesforce Graph Engine is uh, t implemented uh, data flow analysis on Salesforce. So John and his team have taken uh, data flow analysis and, and, and created an implementation of that that we call Salesforce Graph Engine, which is included within the Salesforce Code Analyzer. So Salesforce Graph Engine, it's able to perform a data flow analysis on Apex. Um, it also understands our code base as a whole. As I mentioned a second ago, you know, we take this kind of broader picture of the code base in a way that static code analysis historically um, doesn't do. Um, and that means that it can do all sorts of um, really quite complicated things, um, such as understanding scope, for example, understanding um, to the, the same class that's got multiple different instantiations, um, and that allows it to understand um, and detect violations, far more advanced violations, um, as, a, as a tool that we can use. And the first area that, um, that we focused on is to detect those CRUD and FLS violations that I was kind of just talking to a moment ago in that opportunity and amount example. And the reason that we focused in on this area to begin with is because it's the number one reason that ISVs typically fail the security review. They haven't done the relevant checks whereby that, that would ensure that when going in and installing into a new customer, um, we don't accidentally start creating records under users that shouldn't otherwise have the permission to do so. So that's where we focused our attention. So let's uh, jump into a live demo. I'm going to show two different examples. The first example I'm going to show using that static code analysis, and the second one we're going to detect a CRUD FLS issue using Salesforce Graph Engine. Um, so let's get stuck in. I apologize, I'm going to sort of have my back to you all here, um, but I'll try and sort of turn around and wave as and when I can. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is this kind of static code analysis tool. Can you see that okay? It's big enough, right? Yeah? Um, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just run our static code analysis on, a, on a, a fairly small code base that I have. There's a few classes, there's a few old Aura components, there's a few different bits and pieces in here. So I'm going to run static code analysis. Um, there we go. Okay. So um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is run the command, which is sfdx scanner run. And then I'm going to give it a target, which is my source folder. I want it to scan everything that's in my source folder that you see on the left-hand side there. 
And then I want to output that to a file called results.html. And I'm going to use that format because it's, um, it's nice for us to, to visualize here. Um, but then I'll talk a little bit about some other formats that we can use. But now Salesforce Code Analyzer is, 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 is off. It's, um, run, it's, um, it's run all those um, uh, tests. And we found that there's a whole bunch of, of violations here. Um, so let's results.html. Well, hey, where's that gone? OK, here. And that's a bit unfriendly, isn't it? Um, maybe I'll zoom out a bit. Well, I'll have to do. Um, but we can see there's a number of, of, of violations that have been detected, quite a few, actually. We've got uh, 44 Sever Severity 2 issues, 73 uh, Sev 3 issues, and 1 Sev 5. Um, what uh, the code analyzer is able to do is it's able to output um, all the violations it's found, and it shows us a few interesting things. Firstly, it shows us the engine that has detected the issue. In this case, we've got a whole bunch of issues that have been detected by ESLint. Um, and <clears throat> it tells us which, uh, which rule has been violated, and then it tells us what the actual issue is. And I'm going to scroll right down here until we get to some of these PMD issues. Um, and these are scanning some of my, my Apex classes. Um, I'm going to focus in on this easy one here at the bottom, just for the purpose of this demo. Uh, this severity five issue, where we've got an unused local variable. So there's a variable called object ID that's been defined within this code base, but we haven't used it. Um, if I wanted to find out more, um, I don't know if, um, I'm going to just do that again. If I wanted to find out more, I could follow the link, and I could understand exactly why we why PMD believes this is an issue. Give us an example of the issue. Um, and maybe give us some, some pointers as to how to, how to resolve that issue. Um, fortunately, um, I've done this many times, and I'm, I'm well familiar with how I can resolve this issue. Um, and in line with all best practices, I'm just going to co comment out the violating line. Um, so I'm going to run that again. And with a bit of luck, we'll see the PMD violations come down from 74 to 73. And hey, presto, we've got 73 violations now. So if I refresh this file, bang, our, 70, our Sev5 um, issue has disappeared. So we were able to, to, to resolve that problem based on the analysis that Salesforce Code Analyzer gave us. So now let's, um, ah, just before I move on, actually, one, one last thing I'd uh, talk about is, uh, so here we are looking at an HTML um, view of, of the report that's been given. Um, and whilst this is very helpful for me to, to kind of show you all of the violations, and it's very good from a kind of a, a UI perspective, it's not necessarily going to aid us when it comes to um, continuously improving on our code um, and com continuously ensuring that these violations don't enter our code base. And so um, what we do um, is we actually provide you with the ability to output uh, different uh, file types from Salesforce Code Analyzer. So instead of outputting an HTML file, I can output a, an XML file. What I can also do is uh, ensure that that um, uh, that output is in a certain type. Now, for those of you not familiar, JUnit XML is a format that is widely accepted by CI/CD tools. So they can interpret the, the XML file, they can interpret those violations, and then they can act on those violations. And what we could do in theory is we could say, OK, well, we don't want um, violations over severity 2. So we could say we, we don't want sev2 and sev1 issues to enter our code base. And therefore, we'll go back and we'll force those developers to fix those issues before they can even make it um, into, into a stable release of our code base. Um, so here we are. You can see uh, open results uh, dot, uh, XML. And we can now see we've got a very different view of exactly the same information, which can then be interpreted by a CI CD tool. OK, so moving on to the second example then. And this, this second example uses um, Salesforce Graph Engine, and therefore it's going to be using that data flow analysis. Um, this is actually a semi-real uh, um, example. Um, and I say semi-real be just because it's an extract. Um, for those of you who might be familiar with MPSP, not on non-profit success pack, starter pack, maybe my, my naming might be out of date there. But anyway, it's, it's, our, um, uh, it's a package that we have for helping um, non-profit organizations manage donations and all that kind of stuff. So this is a tool. Um, um, so this is, a small, this is a small extract with a few things going on. I'll spend a bit more time this time going through um, uh, what's actually happening in the code base, um, just because I think it'll help contextualize um, what Salesforce Graph Engine is really capable of here. So 
Um, first of all, we've got a, we've got a fairly straightforward uh, method called create contact, which takes a couple of parameters and then attempts to insert a contact into the database based on the param parameters that we've given it. Um, we also have a, a, an, a list that's created at the top of this method called fields to check. Fields to check is essentially taking all of the fields that we're about to use to insert our record and ensuring that the user has the permission to insert the record with those fields. So ensuring that the user has got create access on the fields that we're trying to insert. And it does this by calling a method called verify creatable. And it's actually using a, you know, a, a, a not simple pattern. We're using a singleton pattern here to uh, uh, access a utilities um, class called util permissions, which has this can create method inside of it, which will return true or false depending on whether the user has access to create the record um, with the fields that we've specified. Hopefully that makes some, some sense. The main thing to note here is that we've got two different files going on, something that static code analysis wouldn't be able to handle. Now if I run, um, run the scanner in a very similar way as to what I did before, um, but with some differences. So first of all, scanner run DFA, data flow analysis. So we've added an extra uh, uh, parameter on the end there, DFA, to specify that we want gra graph engine to handle this. Okay, we then give it a, a target in the same way as we did before. In this case, I'm just giving it a target of a single file, which is my demo example dot class. Um, previously, I gave it a, a, a folder, but we'll explain a little bit more about why I'm only giving it a file on this occasion. And then I'm giving it a project directory. And the project directory is, is, is really critical here because this is providing um, my uh, Salesforce graph engine with the context through which it wants me to scan my demo example. So I'm saying, okay, scan this file for me, but do it in the context of my wider code base. So feel free to check whatever I'm running uh, the scan, against, scan on against all of my other stuff so that you can detect whether violations should be occurring or not based on sort of the wider code base that I have. And again, I'm outputting this to a uh, results.html uh, file. So we'll run that and we'll see if we've got any issues. Now, no, no rule violations have been found. And the reason being is that we have done all the relevant checks for our first name and last name fields uh, for the contact object. But let's imagine now that I want to also take the phone number of a contact. I'm interested in capturing um, the phone number as well. So I'm just going to do phone. Now, the, uh, the keen-eyed observers amongst you may have, uh, have noticed um, what I've done here. Um, but if not, don't worry. All will be explained. So we've now got one violation. Um, so let's, let's, um, let's open that. Open results. HTML. And Salesforce Code Analyzer is able to tell us exactly what's gone on, what's gone wrong. So it's able to tell us a few things, similar stuff to what we saw with, um, with uh, the static code analysis that we did, you know, in terms of where the issue is and, and what type of issue we're facing. Um, but we also have a message here. Uh, we, we know that we've got the, an FLS validation that's missing for an insert operation on the contact object with the field phone. So Salesforce Graph, um, Graph Engine has, has noticed that I've not done a check that this user has the ability to insert a contact with the phone, uh, with the phone field. So if I add a phone, that's, that's the wrong one, isn't it? Come over here again. So if I now add phone, and run that again, we should see that we've resolved my issue because it's detected that we're now doing all of the appropriate checks that we needed to do. Now this, bear in mind, is an issue that we see all the time when it comes to security review for ISVs. And if you're able to capture this well ahead of time, that's going to save you a huge amount of time when it comes to that security review because you don't have to wait for yourself to sit in that queue and then get your results back and then resubmit, et cetera, et cetera. You can catch this ahead of your security review um, and code, out, code, out, code Analyzer has just saved you a whole bunch of time. Um, so, as we can see, no violations were found uh, because I've, I've, I've resolved that issue. So, one last thing that I'm going to do uh, before I move back to the deck is to um, uh, SFG uh, disable. And then we want to disable Apex violation rule. Okay, so 
this, what I'm going to do this time is to run that. Now, this time we would expect to see the error because, as you can see, I'm not, at, I'm not doing that check for the phone, even though I am attempting to, uh, to insert a record, uh, a contact record with the phone, uh, phone number. Um, and the reason it's not going to throw me an error is because actually I've told Graph Engine, don't bother checking. We know what we're doing. Maybe this class is only called in a situation where an admin is involved, um, or for whatever reason we believe that we know better than Code Analyzer. Um, and we don't want to run, uh, we don't want to um, scan for, for Apex FLS violations. Um, so for the last time, I'll, I'll run this. Um, Why would that work if you commented out that code? Um, it's, it's the, what do we call it, the, gra the directive. The, it's, it, it's, um, it's not a commented line of code, it's more an instruction to Graph Engine to tell it not to not to execute, not to not to check for Apex FLS violations. It's called an engine directive. It it it, uh, it tells it tells Salesforce um, Graph Engine not to look for this violation. We don't care about it. It does normally. Well, yeah, it does. It does normally mean that in typical yeah in typical code. But in this in this case, it's doing a bit more than just providing us with some information. Yeah, few few questions. Yeah, go on then. I'll take yours first. You were before Rob. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say you were describing class in some classes. Would that be yeah? Like that. If you had that above the if you had the hello well let's find out shall we so in that case we found a violation and in that case we didn't find a violation so it, it, it's the line immediately preceding it, exactly. So when we, when we put the hello community uh, line here, that doesn't work. And it also doesn't work, I believe, if it were bl a blank line either. Um, yeah. That, that works at kind of class level, right? You can have multiple of those. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to say. Can you do it at yeah. better levels? Yeah, how does it, how does it um, respect the scope, I guess? Can you do it inside classes? Or? Not inside, as far, as far as I remember, but uh, you can do it for multiple. Like inner classes. Yeah. I mean, PMP already does that, but in PMP you can do it like at method level, you can do it at like next line level. Yeah. I, I don't know whether this does yet. Well, it uses PMD, right? So I would have. Not for graph engine, no, of course, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. It looks, it looks, it looks that way, right? <laughs> we can, we can definitely get back to you. I'll post something on the uh, uh, Salesforce community group. The, the, yeah, yeah, the, uh, we'll we'll keep going, and we'll take all the rest of the questions at the end. Don't worry, we will pause for quick, for Q and A. But I'm just going to do a bit of a recap, go through some best practices, then we'll take the rest of the questions. So, um, where's my clicker? Here. So let's just do a quick recap. So first of all, what have we been able to do? We've, uh, we've run Salesforce co uh, Code Analyzer using static code analysis with uh, Scanner Run. Um, we then a were able to look at uh, an HTML output, which is you know, great for the developer, the developer to be able to assess what he's, do what he's done. But we've also talked about how you can use uh, JUnit XML to actually output that and have it interpreted by your CI/CD tools. Um, we've also been able to run data flow analysis with Scanner Run DFA. So that's using uh, Salesforce Graph Engine. And we've done a bit of a refresher on uh, CRUD and FLS checks, um, and we've also fixed a vulnerability. So in terms of, in terms of some best practices then, um, the first thing that I would say is we generally recommend that you run Graph Engine nightly, especially for uh, complex code bases. The reason being is that Graph Engine is obviously doing quite a lot of work, um, so uh, it can take a reasonable amount of time to, to, uh, to run if you're trying to run it alongside just kind of doing some development. That being said, you can run it as a developer if you just kind of want to run Graph Engine. Let's say you're working on a class, you've made some changes just like I did just now, and I want to run Salesforce Graph Engine. 
You can absolutely do that. Just give it a very narrow target, as I did. So I just pointed it to a single file. Um, and then it'll run relatively quickly, obviously, depending on the size of your, size of your code base. Um, but it should come back relatively quickly. Um, we've also seen some issues with very, very large code bases around um, Java heap issues. So we've added a JVM argument so that you can actually increase the heap size for your um, uh, for code analyzer so that it won't give you those issues. Um, in terms of general best practices, um, we recommend integrating it with CICD. We're kind of banging on that drum now. Um, but we do want you to scan continuously so that you're always ready for, um, for example, as, a, as an ISV, ready for security review, but also you know, so that you're um, uh, shipping you know, solid code to your customers and to your users. Um, from, a, from a security review perspective, remember that once you've been through the... Um, once you've been through the manual security review the first time, that doesn't mean you're kind of set for life. Um, we do do re-reviews, as Kia has is, is just alluded to uh, and is well aware. We do we do, do um, uh, re-reviews. So using Salesforce Code Analyzer will ensure that you are, you're, you're well set for the next time that Salesforce is going to come along and pick you up to do a, 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 um, a security review on you. We also recommend that you leverage some community-created GitHub actions and contribute your own templates if you have some good ideas um, for that as well. So one thing that I didn't show you as part of this presentation, I did want to do, but I, I sort of was running out of time. Um, there is already a GitHub action out there, um, which is a really interesting one. When you make a pull request on a, uh, on a, on a repo, um, Salesforce Code Analyzer will automatically run. And then it will add in any violations it finds as, um, as comments within your code. So it's quite an interesting um, little GitHub action that's been created. Feel free to go out, create your own GitHub actions, let us know about them. We'd be happy to champion them in sessions like this one. Um, and then also add violations to technical debt backlog. As you saw in the first demo I did with uh, static code analysis, um, when I ran that, you saw sort of 73 PMD, issue, PMD issues, a whole bunch of VS Lint issues, and with a large code base, we'd expect to see many, many more. So I have no doubt that if you were to go home today and run static code na analysis for the first time, you'd probably see a whole bunch of violations. My recommendation would be to take those violations and add them to your backlog, link to them from your code base so that you know that they've been captured, and then you can suppress those violations within um, Salesforce Code Analyzer, and you can come back to them from you know, wh wherever it is that you've logged them, Jira or where wherever, it el wherever else it might be, um, as part of your, you know, your typical kind of back backlog and, um, um, uh, well, your typical processes. Um, also, um, we encourage you to extend PMD as well. Add your own custom rules to PMD. You're, you're fully empowered to do that, and not only that, but if you're finding that your, um, your rules are really valuable to, the, to them, to you, you're, you're absolutely encouraged to, uh, to, to um, contribute those back to the community through the open source um, uh, repo that's there. For feedback and issues, we've got a couple of links that are provided here, and there's also John right here in the room that you can come and complain to if needed. Um, <laughs> um, for, for installation, yeah, there's a link. It's super, super simple, SFDX plugins install, Salesforce SFDX analyze, uh, uh, scanner. Um, I think you also need some version of Java as well, but it should be relatively straightforward and you can get going. Final summary before we move to Q&A. So what have we seen? Well, first of all, we have a, a unified experience for everything that, that we've seen. So that includes the static code analysis with retire.js, with uh, copy-paste detector, with ESLint, with PMD, with Graph Engine. All of this is included within a single unified experience. We've got multiple output formats, as we've already seen. We've got the XML. We've also got CSV as well. There's lots of different output formats that you can make use of depending on what you need that information for. Um, it's easily pluggable into your CICD processes. So again, we really encourage you to, to do that. We have a quickly growing product um, and a quickly growing rule set as well. In terms of product, we've got some really um, great ideas that uh, John and the team are working on regarding performance and things like that. We're not just going to be focusing on those CRUD FLS issues that we talked about today, but we've got a, we've got a big roadmap um, of things that we want to help our developers um, overcome with Code Analyzer. And we also support many different languages. As I mentioned at the beginning, PMD was sort of apex focused, a little bit of visual force, but now we're talking, you know, uh, lightning components, um, TypeScript, I think XML as well. So lots of things can be scanned by, by Salesforce Code Analyzer. And that's it. Thank you very much. Questions already? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. First question actually, can we skip multiple groups with the surprise that you did? 
And yeah. We use wild cards in like your suggestion. So if let's say I'm creating my custom rules, I'd like to call this custom prefix for that. If I want to skip multiple rules, can I use wild cards like question mark or asterisk in there? I don't know about the wild cards. You can certainly you can certainly uh, you can certainly suppress multiple rules. Uh, but at the moment, the only we, we'd only have the you know, I don't know. Okay, fine. Anyway, <laughs> uh, well, you can create your custom configuration, and then based on that, run the rules you actually want for the engine directives. No, I don't think you can use those well for at least not for graph engine. Yeah. 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 What you've got to remember is suppression should be a corner case, right? The idea is that you're improving your code quality. If you're suppressing so many rules with wildcards, you want to start questioning why am I why am I scanning to begin with? You know, what am I gaining by suppressing that many rules anyway? Yeah, my question was more about you know, modularizing the rules so that, you know, uh, I can probably break them down in a better way. And then, you know, let's say for a code base I want to suppress specific rules, I can do that. Yeah, you can create uh, your custom configuration for a, for, a, for any a subset of the rules that we have, okay. which is valid. Right? We, we have probably some uh, architects that want to run a very specific set of rules to understand code complexity, code readability, and focus more on that aspect. Mm -hmm. We have people that want to focus more on security. So that's a perfectly valid use. Right. And I'm not sure if it's already a feature in, in the tool, but is there support for CSS violation and uh, software query plugs? We, we do have some rules around the, uh, around the, the queries, yeah. But we, we have a roadmap of rules that we want to build into, into, into Graph Engine. We started with this code FLS one. We'll start gradually adding more and more. Will that roadmap be publicly available, like the DevOps Center roadmap? Did you say that Code Analyzer is an open source uh, project? PMD. Yeah, and so is Code Analyzer. Okay. Right. There you go. <laughs> so uh, our, we have a GitHub repo. It's open. People can, can consult. As we develop, you'll see what, what, what's coming up in terms of roadmap. Uh, no, I don't quite have anything public just yet, simply because the product is not quite at the stage where we want to to just pro make over promise us for that. But once we get to that, that point, I'll be more than happy to do that. Sure. Okay. So, I, I think in, uh, in the FSL, you mentioned that in the days of the time. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking that. But, but, but yeah, feel yeah. free to just write up. So I think to, uh, the FSL will be based on the provision set. So I think sooner or later we will have that expiration of the provision set. I think it would be maybe next three months or four months. Mm -hmm. So if that will be taken into consideration as that expiry has done for that particular provision set or uh, there will be some custom mm -hmm. thing we have to build on. They probably, at this point, at this point, you probably need to build some, some custom rules because we did not have that. Right. Second thing you mentioned that uh, the time we pull the uh, code, it, we can, I mean, it will be uh, automated and can execute at the time. But is it possible while we are pushing the code so after our changes? At that time, we can restrict the developer or someone that if there's some, uh, like, P1 needs to be identified or something. Is it possible to do that? That's entirely up to your CICD configuration. Like we, what we, we basically provide an output of a, of a kind of violation we found with, with a severity level, right? You can then use that as an input into your CICD tool and then enforce those, those kind of behaviors. Okay, the file format you provided, that yes. same format can work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, third thing is like you decided like what are the priorities of the issues? Can we change like okay this kind of issue? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Not today. Uh, we are working on it. So we want to provide you guys with the ability to set your custom severity for each one of the rules and effectively allow you to define what severities are important for you, especially if you're a Salesforce customer. And as an IC partner, you might have a different set of rules that you want to focus on. What you what you can do though is you can set a threshold for the the, the severities that you uh, are interested in so that a code analyzer will actually throw an error if you so for example if you if you say you're only interested in sev2 and sev1 issues it'll still find 3 4 and 5 and, and and whatever but it'll actually throw an error when sev1 and sev2 issues are found but what my point is like the criteria which you have defined for the sev2 issues according to my particular uh, implementation uh, there could be a possibility that that's actually a uh, sev1 issue so can yeah, you change I, that? I, I agree well, I mean not today but the, yes we are building that Sorry, Rob. <laughs>
it can test them today. It, it actually tests them today. We've had requests of, uh, in, of, of people that want to provide an exception so that we do not test the test classes, but today we cover everything. Rob. I, I, I have a handful of questions. Let me, let me pick some of the, the important ones. Um, so the, the, the custom rules that you can set up for PMD, are those effectively the same rules for the graph engine? Is it graph engine effectively a, a different way of executing yeah, PMD rules? Graph engine, no. is, graph engine is not customizable at this point. Okay. So you can, you can have your custom rules for ESLint and PMD. Right. And then play them into your analyzer. Graph Engine, we haven't provided the means just yet for you to create your own. Today, Graph Engine is purely the Apex CRUD FLS issues that you saw right. in, in, in this session. Today. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah if, if I'm allowed more, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I've, I've only got two more. Okay. Um, roadmap wise, is this going to be actually baked into DevOps Center and be an integral part <laughs> of it? Well, good question. Our goal is to bake it into a lot of things. So we're, we're working with, uh, with CICD partners that are even outside of Salesforce, like of Copago and others that we are, we're very keen to have this discussion. Or get set, maybe. Uh, yeah, and I'd yeah, yeah. be happy to, to talk with anyone else. DevOps Center, of course. Mm -hmm. We are looking to that. We are looking into um, having the community creating their own integrations for, like, so as, as you saw, GitHub Actions, but also in such, such as CircleCI, Azure Pipelines. We are keen to get the community to create those kind of integrations as well. And the, the, I think we're going to limit just the two because we've got two more questions. I think Tim and Andon both had a question. Is that right? Uh, sure. Sure. Oh, that's great. So you can have one more. Okay. The, one. La the last question sort of relates to that sort of partnership stuff. So when you talk about open source, specifically what open source license are you looking at here? Good question. Whatever we use. It's yeah, what, whatever the Salesforce open source license okay. is. When, when yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Last question. So I've got four. <laughs> well, so two, can I take we're that's a little question bit itself. We're a little bit behind. I've lost them by now rather than arguing. I'm arguing. The fact is healthy. Okay, so you've said this is this is trying to pick up the same kind of credit for less as checkmarks does. How does this compare with checkmarks and is your plan for replacement? Replace I'll, I'll address the first part of the question. It's much better than check marks as I've identified them. Uh, are we, I mean, well, we are hoping to extend the number of code engines that we allow as part of a security review to include some sports code and like. Second one, there's a Apex PMD plugin that's available, um, extension that's available for VS Code. How does that work? Is it the same thing? Is it something different? Totally separate. We are planning to have our own VS Code extension as part of the Salesforce extension bundle for, for VS Code. One comment, uh, Graph Engine is marvelous. That's like an Apex runtime label. So well done. Thank you. <laughs> we, are, we are people that are former leaders of the Apex team working with us on that, which helps a lot. But uh, yeah, looking forward to, to getting to the development. Well, actually, I was going to ask about the checkmarks now as That's well, but I've got a question for you, if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, when are we going to be able to migrate one GPT? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll close this up. <laughs> so, uh, we are working on it. I have a team dedicated to that effort. Uh, it will take a while. We are opening our developer preview for, for migrations in uh, January, February next year. You might be aware that there was a previous developer preview, but it's reopening now. We resolved some issues that were in the previous developer preview. We will likely continue to extend that developer preview for most of next year. We hope that in the year after, we'll be in a position to, uh, to allow you guys to actually migrate properly to Jupyter. I think, and I was going to ask for a big round of applause for Michael, but I think John. <laughs> <laughs>